They're going to have to raise their level of intensity. Obviously, Georgia controls their own destiny. They have the opportunity to get in the playoffs. The Storm tonight are going to have to play intense. They're going to have to come out with great energy. They're going to have to be aggressive. This is a young team. It's going to be very interesting to, to see if they understand. they still got a lot to play for. There's people in the front office watching. We talked about this was an opportunity for this defense to continue to play at the high level like it's been doing. Unfortunately, the mental mistakes hurt them. Result, touchdown, points from the board. And that's something that's got to be called, right? It's got to be called. Michael Johnson he came in, he extended not just one hand, but he extended really both hands in that situation to create the separation. Now, what he's really taught to do is to get in there with the shoulder pad, use his body to create that separation, and he could get away with that. He got away with that one. Next time, that's going to get called. Colin Nelson steps up and makes a great play. It almost looked like he was going to get a PI in that situation, but he comes over the back makes a tip on the ball. He actually had an opportunity to, to, to catch that ball. Unfortunately, he doesn't come up with the interception, but he does break up the pass. Here's Jackson to the 20. First down, Storm. I think the one thing that I'm really liking about Grothy is his pre-snap read. He's looking over the defense, and it looks like early on, as soon as he's taking that ball from center, Dave, he's, his eyes are locked on where he's going to throw that ball because he knows that guy's going to be open. And sometimes that's not a good thing, but in this game, if you can lock on and get rid of the ball quickly and on time, you can make it happen. You know, once he's able to take it to the next level and hit those bang-bang plays and get that timing down, which is going to come with practice and more repetition, you're going to continue to see this offense succeed. But now, tonight, you just want him to make the proper throw, make the, you know, don't turn the ball over and give their team an opportunity to win, and that's what he's doing. One of the things I like about Grothy is his ability to ball start. improvise as he's throwing Number the ball. A lot of times, you know, you five see yard a, penalty. a quarterback drop back, Second just down. release the ball over the top. This guy, can, he can sidearm it, he can throw it underhand. He's going to do anything he can to complete the ball. Well, interesting enough, they went against their tendency right there. They motion all three receivers on the left-hand side. They come across the grain to complete the ball. Ben Nelson is a, you know, another go-to receiver. He's been in this system a long time. He finds his way across the field right on the end zone. That always makes coaches a little bit nervous when the receiver catches the ball for the first down, but then goes backwards to try to make a few more yards because if he doesn't get the first down, all of a sudden now he's going backwards, he gets tackled, and now you're, you're forced into a, another situation, another bad situation. But he was able to, to spin back, continue to get positive yards, another great play. Uh, Ryan Neese covering the Sacramento Mountain Lions angle for us tonight. Let's go to him for this report. We just heard from Danny Green. Coach Green just gave an inspirational message. The guys, the players understand the intensity of this game. They know the magnitude. This is a must-win situation. They got to go out, play hard, play intense. Everybody's accountable in this situation. This is a big game. The Coach Green knows it. It's going to be an exciting night of football. I can't wait to watch. Bruce Gradkowski, Oakland Raiders quarterback. You're out here kissing babies, signing autographs, taking a lot of pictures. Why are you out here tonight? Uh, just to see this game, you know, see my buddy Jeff Garcia and, and other uh, guys I played with, you know, on Omaha, also Sacramento. And it's just awesome to get out here tonight and see guys getting an opportunity. You know, that's what this is about is just getting another opportunity any way you can to play some football. This is your first chance to come to a UFO game. What's your thought of the talent that you're seeing here tonight? I mean, the talent's no issue. You know, there's talent all over this field, and, and that's what's exciting to see. Now, your buddy Jeff Garcia just took a sack. They're down right now. What would you be telling him? I know he mentored you in, in Tampa. What would be the message you'd give him tonight? Well, Jeff's just one of the best competitors I know. And, uh, you know, I know this is tough for him right now, but you just got to keep doing what you're doing uh, and take one play at a time. You can't try to just get it all back with one play. And he knows that. Tyson DeVry made a great catch. He said his prayers on that Hail Mary. Walk me through that play. Is that how you guys draw it up? That's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly how we draw it up. Uh, we practice it every day in practice at the end of the at the end of practice. So worked out, said my prayers, worked out well. Now step toes behind you. You're yeah. six foot six. You out jumped them and you went up and made a great play. Talk talk me through that situation. I told them to be ready for the tip, but I decided to go up and get it myself. For more on this victory, let's go down to our Ryan Nees. Greg, you're right. It was a tough year for the Colonials, but they finished strong. Josh, you got to be happy with tonight's performance. Absolutely. I mean, this is a pretty cool team effort. Of course, Ryan Nees joining us again, our partner in crime this week. Good to see you, man. Absolutely. Good to see you. Before we get to the fun stuff, let's talk about this game. Obviously, Steelers, Cardinals, they had their practices this week. 
What are they going through right now? What's going through these guys' mind three days before the big game? You know, obviously, it's Wednesday. So Wednesday's a big day, big preparation day. You're really trying to implement your game plan, really trying to, to get settled on what the X's and O's are going to be because once you got that settled, now that's going to carry you through the rest of the week. So right now, they're trying to take away the chaos, yeah. the distractions, the tickets, the family, the media, all of those things, focus on the game plan and build the foundation for the rest of the week cut to come. Let's start with the Steelers. Obviously, uh, this week, they've been concentrating on getting a couple of their stars healthy. Ben Roethlisberger, of course, got hit in the back in the, uh, hard, pretty hard in the AFC Championship game, so he's right. been kind of dealing with that this week. And then Heinz Ward got uh, injured, injured his knee in that game, his, uh, his right knee. Um, what are your thoughts right now on the Steelers? Are those, they said those guys, are, Mike Tomlin said those guys are going to play this week. What are your thoughts so far on the Steelers? Absolutely. Those guys are definitely going to play. I mean, those, those are your two big-time guys. Those are your leaders. Those are your captains. Those are guys that are kind of your go-to players, and the team's going to rally behind them. They've had two weeks to kind of prepare rest their bodies. They did get banged up. You know, obviously that's part of the game, but they have a, probably a great training staff. They've done everything they can to get these guys on, on the field, and it's a Super Bowl. I mean, I, I've seen guys play with broken legs before in a preseason game, so for the Super Bowl, I'm telling these guys are going to play with all kinds of injuries. You know, growing up, my father played in, in the NFL, and I was fortunate enough to watch him, so football has always been a part of my life. And, uh, you know, my dad wanted me to play tennis, and my mom wanted me to play golf, but football was in me. Once I started playing in high school and it started to excel there, earned a college scholarship and uh, ended up going to the Buccaneers, it wasn't an easy road. I was an undrafted guy, um, and usually undrafted guys are just kind of brought into camp to kind of be tackling dummies. I was fortunate enough to make the team and we had, that was our Super Bowl year and it was a great run. And each year I've continued to kind of use that as a motivation and continue to prove that I deserve to play in this league and play at a high level. It gives you an unbelievable platform to be able to speak out and help others. I'm thankful for the ability to, to live out that dream. Ryan Nese's bone-crushing hit on Dallas Clark last week in Indianapolis impressed defensive coordinator Joe Barry so much, he showed it seven times during Monday's film session. Every time you can hit somebody like that and uh, hit a guy like you know Dallas Clark, it uh, makes you feel good inside. Get out my way and watch out as I come through. But when your father is Hall of Fame safety Ronnie Lott, hits like that don't always garner the same praise from home. He was like, oh, that, was, that was a good hit. I was like, well, that was it a good hit or was it a great hit? Oh, it was a good hit. It was a good hit. You know, you could have brought your feet a little bit more and then it might have been great.